Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss with you how to compute the length of a curve. And in particular, we're going to use methods from calculus and we're going to use integration. So let's talk about a simple um, example and I'll step you through it. Okay, here is the example we're going to talk about. We are asked to compute the arc length or the length of the curve with the following parametric equations. Okay, so here t is a parameter and that give, for, for, for each value of t you get a coordinate in the xy plane and when you move say from t from 0 to 3 then you get part of a curve. Okay, so what does this curve look like? It looks a bit strange. So let me just um, let me just show you what this curve looks like. You can see here that it's almost like a folium or, or something like that where the curve repeats back on it. Now, I've, I've plotted this curve in GeoGebra in, um, for t between negative 3 and 3 to show you the sort of nice symmetry. All we want is the bit, if you follow my mouse, all we want is this bit here. That's the bit for t between 0 and positive 3. Okay. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, we're going to use calculus and we're going to use integration in particular. So let's let's step through it. All right. So for this, we're going to apply a formula which involves the derivatives of these uh, parametric equations with respect to t. So we're going to first off differentiate both of these equations with respect to t. So by dash, I mean the derivative with respect to t. So if I differentiate the first one, I get 6t. And if I differentiate the second one with respect to t, I'll get 3t squared minus 3. Okay, so now what? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to square those derivatives and sum them and take the square root. Now, that seems very odd, and I'll give you the geometric interpretation of why this helps with the arc length uh, at the end. All right, so let's consider the sum of the squares of these, all square rooted. So it's not clear why I'm doing this first, but um, it's just uh, from a simplification point of view. You'll see when we get to the end why this is important. Okay, so square that, we'll get 36t, and we square that, and we'll get something like um, 9t to the power 4 minus 18t squared plus 9. 36t squared... Okay, so let's simplify this. So I expand it out. I'm going to get something like this. Okay, so that'll become 9t to the power 4. Then I'll, that times that times 2, which is negative 18t squared uh, plus 9. Okay, now you can see the t squares are going to, some of the t squares are going to cancel out. If I can just squish it in down here, I'll get something like the following. Okay, so you can see we've got the square root of something. What we would like to do, and a common theme with many of these problems, is what's inside the square root is, the, is a perfect square. Okay, so the next step, if, if we want to simplify this, is to manage away the square root sign. Okay. Now, if you look closely, there's a common factor of 9, but also what's in here is, is a perfect square. So that's, that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, well, I can take out the 9, and then I'm left with t to the power 4 plus 
2t squared plus 1. That's a perfect square. It's just t squared plus 1, all squared. So now you can see I can manage away this square root because 9 is 3 squared. So I'll get 3 t squared plus 1. Okay, well, so what? So what? We just did some algebra there. Well, let me show you the connection between calculus and this square root and um, the length of a curve. So let's let, let's look at the formula now, and then I'll discuss what it means in a minute. All right, so we computed the, the derivatives. We, we did the sum of squares with the square root, and we got down to this. Now, Let's call the arc length L, big L, okay? So the arc length, whatever value it is, is going to be big L. So the formula is just the integral of this sum of squares of derivatives where the region of integration is the t values, the, the, the interval for where the t comes. So the alpha here would be 0, the beta here would be 3, okay? Now you can see to integrate a square root sign isn't easy, and that's why we spend a bit of time simplifying these things on the other curve, uh, on the other page, and we got down to this. Okay, so let's put that in. So our alpha and beta would be 0 and 3. I've got this to just down to be this, okay, and now I'm just integrating a polynomial, right? So if I integrate 3t squared, I get t cubed. If I integrate 3, I get 3t. So if I do the integration, I'll get this, and when I plug in 0, of course I get 0. When I plug in 3, I'll get... Um, 27 plus 9, which is 36. So the length of the curve that we're interested in is 36 units. Now, the question is, where does that formula come from and why does it work? Well, I can't give you a full explanation, but I can draw a little picture to make things a little easier. The underlying thing is Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem for triangles. That's it. Okay. That's all it is for these kind of lengths of curve type problems from calculus. What you're doing is you're applying Pythagoras' theorem for the length of the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle. That's it. So let me just, just talk about that just for a minute. Okay, so we're happy with that. Now, if, I, if I'm to draw a curve like this, let's say, and I want to compute, say, that length there, not the orange length, the little blue length, what I can do is approximate it with a straight line joining the two points. I can form a right angle triangle with, say, base delta x and base delta y, and what I'm interested in is delta s, right? And you know from Pythagoras that... This is true, okay? And what calculus allows you to do is allows you to shrink these things and, and essentially bring these points close together in the limit and sum up everything here to get a fancy integral sign. So this, and where's the formula? Oh, so this and this kind of look the same, right? Except there's no integral sign there. So what this formula is based on is Pythagoras' theorem. This is a real basic, uh, basic, basic uh, uh, starting point. Okay, so that's the starting point of where the theorem and the formula comes from. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this this presentation. Just to recap, compute the derivatives of your parametric equations. Look at the sum of the squares and and square root it. Try to make what's inside the square root sign a perfect square. Otherwise, it may be too tricky to integrate. And then just apply the formula.
Anyway, hope you found this useful. Hope you found this enjoyable. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you. Bye.